2016. I'll never forget it. It was the year my dang content made it to YouTube. Soon after, it was revealed to the whole world that there was a new beast among YouTubers. Mr. W. 55 subscribers. No one had ever seen anything like it before. Mr. W was in a golden era of views. That changed, however. The saucy video suddenly stopped coming out when Mr. W's parents kicked him out at the young, ripe age of 20. Hitting the peaceful YouTube channel with a devastating blow, crippling its very foundation. With the whole affair causing him to have to get a real job and focus on other things than YouTube, his subscribers began to plump. For all intents and purposes, Mr. W's YouTube channel was finished. Resident Evil 4 has a formidable reputation. It sticks out as the title that saved its beloved franchise, and the one that controversially defined the new formula for survival horror games to follow. It was a clear marker for when Resi games were getting away from this, oh, fuck! and getting into more of this. It's been well documented that there was a lot of difficulty surrounding this game's development, which ultimately led it to depart from its horror roots, giving it sort of a stigmatizing legacy that plenty have already held a microscope over and discussed in depth. But in hindsight, these circumstances created one of the most critically celebrated action games in existence. Bungie's former design lead, Jamie Grismere, once said a game needs 30 seconds of fun. This became an infamous way to describe what an enjoyable gameplay loop needs to be. A gameplay loop being the actions you can input into the game, so shooting, kneeling, moving, etc., and the enemies and environments pushing context onto you from that input. It is a way of phrasing whether or not the mechanics and the dynamic situations the sandbox can create are interesting enough to hold up the length of an entire game. It's very easy to spot the difference between a good game and a great game by measuring if it lives up to this criteria or not. This can be said true about Resident Evil 4's dramatically different approach to gameplay than its precursors. Punishing survival horror elements that were hallmarks of the series up until Resident Evil 4 are woven into its action-oriented gameplay seamlessly in a manner that not only results in a more tension-filled action experience, but a very dynamic one, where no encounter feels the same. It was this decision from Capcom to have Resident Evil 4 stray from its horror roots that unintentionally created a gameplay loop with a hell of a lot more depth than any linear action game I can think of. Today, I'm going to look at why. There is plenty to mention about the trio of elements that is RE4's gameplay, but the first one that sticks out and has the most significant impact is probably the most immersive breaking aspect. It's your restricted movement. It's what keeps this game grounded in survival horror, but in hindsight opens up a plane of interesting scenarios you usually wouldn't get with complete freedom of movement. You can't move at all while you're aiming, which means you can't walk backwards and shoot, so you'll need to position yourself far enough away to give you enough time to put down some well placed shots. You either hold your ground with the supplies and ammunition that you got, or cower away to find another shooting position. There's another side to this though. Even if you are holding your ground, you can still be hit if you stay in a static position for too long, as some enemies are capable of throwing objects and explosives that'll knock me out on his ass. <laughs> Having to choose between attack mode and moving has always been what made Resident Evil encounters so tense. While RE4 is more forgiving than games of old in just about all of its design aspects, this feeling is still underlined in every single encounter. Fighting a mob of Ganados on your own terms doesn't last very long due to your movement being completely restricted while shooting, leading you to move if you aren't capable of holding your ground. With the circular way that levels are designed, trickled with narrow pathways in which most of these encounters occur, and taking into account that Leon hasn't been trained to strafe yet, evading enemies can be difficult if not timed correctly. Evasion and attacking and how these two cannot be done in conjunction with each other is the first thing that RE4 does to make the simplest encounters require more strategical thinking on a surface level than I think people give it credit for. 
I recently watched an interview with Dead Space creator Glenn Schofield. He was explaining a lot of the inspiration of creating Dead Space came from Resident Evil 4. He mentions that stopping a shoot was scary but took him out of the experience, so he chose to have complete movement in Dead Space. I bring this up because I'm impartial to this, and in the context of RE4, I can't imagine it without this restriction. It's stupid, sure, that Leon can't sidestep, but taking into account movement speed of the primary enemy types, the Ganados, and their attack patterns, it actually feels really appropriate. Most enemies move slowly towards you and aren't very animated. They usually have their arms at their sides or raised while holding a weapon as they shuffle towards you, making it easier for you to put your laser sight over whatever limb you intend on hitting. Unlike Dead Space's necromorphs that move quickly and are very animated, encounters with Ganados are much more interactive. While a single Ganado is hardly an intermediate threat, they do have a lot of health and do deal a significant amount of damage if you allow them to get close enough. And depending on what limb you hit, it opens up even further possibilities to take them down. Speaking of which... Resident Evil 4 was the first to flip the typical shooting game trope of headshots being the most efficient way of killing. This added a layer of consequence you don't really get with enemy types in other games. Halfway through the first chapter, you're shown that blowing off a Ganado's head would replace it with a parasite form, extending the amount of damage they can take and adding to their lethality. Parasite forms are by no means boss worthy, but they pose an interesting challenge alongside regular forms, as they are much harder to anticipate and are still able to attack if you stun them. They give punishment to pointing and shooting tactics. When Ganados transform into parasite forms, they gain back their health, so if you spent 5 shots making one of their heads pop, you probably need to spend 5 more making sure it stays down for good, digging into your ammo supply. It creates the situation where you can potentially make it worse for yourself if you're not careful about where you're putting your shots, because those stun animations are a lot harder to trigger when Ganados are in parasite form. And good luck getting close enough to use your knife. Even if you do have tight trigger control, you'll be encouraged to find more advantageous ways of taking down enemies than shooting at the area that'll cause the most damage, i.e. the head, to avoid them transforming. For instance, shooting the legs will cause enemies to stumble, giving you a brief opportunity to trigger a WWE style takedown that delivers a great deal of damage and knocks back enemies within proximity. You can also shoot the head, and that'll usually trigger a kick with a very similarly powerful effect. But there's a drawback to this, because shooting a gun out in the head will risk it turning into a parasite form, forcing you to spend more ammunition taking them down than if you had just gone for body shots. My next comparison about Dead Space is that enemies don't really have this dynamic. There is a need for experimentation, since there is always a go-to method of dismemberment that you're supposed to utilize. Well, dismemberment does make the casinos far more menacing, as you are supposed to be afraid of these guys, it makes killing them repeatedly sort of a slog. Meanwhile, Resident Evil 4 can throw hordes of Ganados at you, and it won't become frustrating. Encountering zombies in those older Resident Evil games was always meant to give the player a sense of dread. And they nailed that feeling, not only by how they were placed and presented, but by forcing difficult decisions onto the player whenever they were encountered, and giving consequences that you were forced to live with after. This sort of tension is condensed into RE4's encounters by reducing the consequence factor down much more to a margin that gives more room for experimentation. Experimentation that has the potential to set you back or set you forward. So while Ganados don't necessarily instill dread the same way these cardboard zombies did, and aren't nearly as difficult to kill as Xenos, your encounters with them always have an interesting outcome. You see, this is the thing. You have all these strategic opportunities that you can create that allow you to be more efficient than if you just rely on shooting enemies completely until they're dead. Even despite spending 90% of your downtime looting the environment as much as you can for supplies, you can still be easily overwhelmed if you don't use your resources wisely when you encounter enemies. You'll do better at holding your ground by doing things like grouping up enemies, triggering stun animations, and syncing up what supplies slash weapons to use as enemies move up and get closer. And this brings me to the most underrated element of this combat loop.
This game is sort of notorious for starting the trend of ammo boxes lying around environments and enemies shitting them out like pinatas whenever they've been killed. But you're never really accumulating enough of a single ammo type to the point where you don't have to think about how much you're shooting. Although ammo is far more common in this game, the time to kill for most enemies is pretty high regardless of difficulty setting. And as the game goes on, enemy health values go up, so you're not going to want to try taking shots that you aren't sure you can make. In RE4, ammo pickups play an important role in limiting how adaptable you can be in combat. The frequency of ammo pickups you find is what dictates the methods you can use to take down enemies, and the game does a really great job at pacing them in a manner that is scarce, but generous enough to give you options. Ammo is placed around the many environments in a way that encourages exploration in down periods when you're not fighting, and desperate scavenging when you are, especially in some of the game's more claustrophobic arenas. This is where a major aspect of the difficulty in Resident Evil 4 lies in. Encounters have a tendency to stretch out due to various factors, causing your ammo supply to run thin, and in turn, forcing you to rely on ammo that has been placed in the environment, and by enemies that drop them when they've been killed. Scavenging becomes the prime incentive to stay mobile, forcing you to dangerous areas you otherwise wouldn't move through in order to find more supplies. This gives a new dimension to the combat that I feel is kind of overlooked. Every encounter plays out differently now that you're having to juggle the act of obtaining ammo to use and holding your ground. You can't defend yourself if you have no ammo, needless to say. So your survivability directly depends on your efficiency in gathering resources. See, if you are resorting to only shooting to take down enemies, you'll pick up just enough ammo to usually get yourself through the next bad guy or two before you have to switch weapons or find more. Again, leaving your options pretty restricted if you're caught off guard. Even if you're using your ammo more conservatively, you'll find yourself in these situations where you have to switch to a less conventional weapon as more and more enemies appear because you've run empty with the one you intended on using from your last encounter. It's what makes going back and fighting through sections you've already memorized like the back of your hand still feel so exciting to play through, especially on New Game Plus, where you're able to start the game with the arsenal you've accumulated in your last playthrough. Because even with the grenade slingshot, three different pistols, two SMGs, a sniper, a shotgun, and an RPG all tucked away in your inventory, you're still required to conserve ammo and be advantageous about what weapon to utilize in order to survive those sorts of situations. People stress that the silly amounts of ammo boxes littered around is the biggest sin Resident Evil 4 commits when turning its back on its horror roots. And that's a valid point. However, when you view this game as what it is, an action game first and foremost, it's styled back considerably compared to most of Resident Evil 4's contemporaries. By throwing the need to resource manage into the mix, it offsets the typical balance of attacking and evading most linear shooting games have, and it's able to do this so well with its zombie-like enemies because unlike typical enemies that shoot back at you, you're able to expose yourself much more to them. And not only that, but since enemies drop ammo when you've killed them, you need to either lure them away or run around them to be able to scavenge in order for you to stay in the fight. You see, the ammo income strikes the sweet spot that gives the player the right amount of vulnerability to force them to give consideration into their actions and just enough firepower to make them feel like they're able to kill as much as they need to, but not without some consequences. The depth of this game is a result of its developers mixing together staple mechanics of the survival horror genre they perfected with streamlined, action-oriented ones. And if you're watching this video, there's probably a good chance you already knew that. But I think the distinction to be made here is that Resident Evil 4 focuses on action first, just not at the cost of changing the pace so radically that people who were coming off the bandwagon from the much slower Resident Evils at the time wouldn't feel totally lost in the over-the-shoulder shooting. Those distinct gameplay aspects of earlier Resident Evils like limited mobility, resource management, and stopping to shoot your weapon were melded together with mechanics that made combat much more intuitive for it to be enjoyed consistently over the length of an entire game. Those are all traits that were inherited in some form or another, and when they transitioned over to RE4, they elevated the formula typified in most action games, as well as turning a lot of shooter conventions on their head. And I think it only may have been due to this reinvention of a traditionally survival horror franchise where we were able to get such an intense action game. Looking back on Resident Evil 4 now, it's noteworthy that it didn't have nearly as much of an effect on the shooting genre as it did on the survival horror genre. Sure, it did inspire the use of over-the-shoulder shooting made popular in series like Gears and Uncharted, but besides a couple of examples within its own franchise, 
Not many action games have really emulated the trio of elements that made this combat loop so drastically unique and filled with tension in a way that stacks up in comparison. <laughs> Hey guys, this has been my very first analytical video. It definitely was no easy task putting this together, but I'm really glad I pushed myself to do it. You don't really realize how much work goes into making videos like this until you actually try to do it on your own. I'd like to give quick thanks to Mandalore Gaming and Racevic. I've never spoken to either of them, but watching their content has rekindled a passion I've had for analytical videos of this form. If you haven't, you should check them out. Anyway, if you guys have any recommendations about the video, let me know in the comments as I'd really appreciate the feedback. And if you enjoyed the video, and only if you enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you guys want to know what I'm up to, follow me on Twitch at MrW, or hop into my Discord. Links will be in the description. Thanks you guys, and don't forget to sub for the suck.